Good morning, everyone. So today we've come back to Vitosha Boulevard. We've taken you on a food tour, on a Sofia city tour, and today we're going to take you on a communist tour. However, before we start the tour, we're going to go to a restaurant called Cake Lab for breakfast. This is my kind of breakfast, cake and coffee. <laughs> this looks absolutely delicious. I got the Black Forest chocolate cake and Holly got a red velvet and we both ended up getting cups of coffee. This time Holly did order the right one. She uh, ordered a cafe latte rather than a normal coffee which turned out to be espresso. So <laughs> I'm winning today already. <laughs> winning. I almost don't want to, I just want to like preserve it. It looks beautiful. Just eat it. That is really good. Um, the chocolate perfect. It's got like a nice little sponge fluff. I don't know. It's really good. Cake lab for breakfast. Very good cake. I think red velvet cake might be one of my favorite cakes. This one's really good. Oh, the lady just gave us some free chocolates to try. The white chocolate one is lavender and the dark chocolate one is orange. And they're little snowmen. So cute. Really good. Sweet. So sweet. Orange. Definitely tastes orange. So, I like that one the best. If you're in Sofia and you're looking for a good dessert or breakfast place, we highly recommend a stop at the Cake Lab. The cakes were delicious, the chocolate was very good, and the coffee was wonderful. Now that I'm all caffeinated and sugared up, we are gonna go to the Red Flat. And the Red Flat is basically a museum in an apartment that showcases how life was during communist times in Bulgaria. Well, we got our tickets from the communist gift store, which is a ironic statement somewhat. And now we're making our way to the Red Flat, which is literally just around the corner. We've made it inside of the Red Flat. We've got our audio guides, our headphones, and the audio guide is gonna take us room by room. The 80s called. Hi. They want, they want your coat back. <laughs> In the entranceway, we listened to the first two stories and they gave us information about the family, the Petrovi family, and they told us what life would be like for them. In the stories, we learned that this particular family lived with their in-laws because housing was hard to come by. It was available, but it just took maybe a decade or more for people to be able to buy their houses. So to pass the time, the common thing for people to do was to invite people over to their house and to enjoy their company by talking and celebrating birthdays and just gossiping. We have made it past the entrance area and we're officially going to walk into the flat now. So the first room we came to is the dining room and one of the main features of the dining room is this massive dining table. This is quite a common feature in communist Bulgarian flats. I remember having that phone with the The rotary Yeah, back in my grandma's house. Do you remember them? Yeah, we had those phones in our house. My mom had a Mickey Mouse rotary phone. That's capitalism for you. That she had when she was a kid. We didn't use it, but I mean, we had it in our house. I remember seeing it. You're, uh, on the phone, you can actually hear people talking. Oh, like the... Uh... Yeah. Like if your wires got crossed, yeah. then you were on a, someone else's call. And they have the Hornet, which was the newspaper. And they also have an assortment of postcards, some of which are actually written on. And it just shows you different places in Bulgaria and what they look like. With Guns N' Roses in the background. I love Guns N' Roses in the background. Secretly, Holly is loving this because she gets to go through the personal possessions in an apartment. We don't get invited to many places because Holly insists on going through all the drawers whenever we go. I've never done that. <laughs> what are you looking for now? What is looking at? Illegal publications of Western authors. Right, so books weren't allowed to be uh, brought in if they were from the West. 
So as you can see, I'm sitting in communist chic. This is the latest furniture from the 60s, 70s collection. And it's like being in a little time capsule. I genuinely do feel like I've gone back in time. This is the lounge area and this would be a great source of pride for the families because this is where they would keep most of their possessions and stuff. Um, things included having loads of books. Like Holly said before, books were kind of banned and there was a strict censorship. So having a collection of books was seen as a plus point. Uh, they also had a TV. It had a it boasted eight channels, but only one would work, which is the Bulgarian national TV. And that would basically showcase communist propaganda. Doesn't matter if you grew up in a capitalist society or a communist society, because you always have a cabinet filled with booze. The Toblerone and the Johnny Walker were imported products, but they were allowed to have them because they were a family that worked abroad. So they could bring them back in. Yeah, so this medal is from 41 to 44, and this was the state medal. This room of the house is the children's room, so this was the only child. He was a boy. This is his room. Um, on his bed, he has his school uniform, he has a bike, his desk to do his schoolwork. He also had a really cool record player that we played with a little bit earlier on. Play a record. Do you want to play one? Sure. Just lots of board games and just kind of shows you what a kid's life was like in the 80s in Bulgaria. The bike that I was riding around earlier turns out it's actually quite a staple of communist society and the cool thing about it it was designed so that small kids as well as adults could ride and you can see by the design it's got a low frame but like uh, adjustable seating which I Find pretty fascinating. And here you can see all of the different clothing that people would wear in Bulgaria. Holly's showcasing 1988 <laughs> Bulgarian couture. <laughs> how does it look? Fancy. So, how does it look? Puffy. In fairness, that hat would suit your current coat quite well. Yeah. Do you like the look? Yeah. I do. <laughs> Hi. Looks like I've got a comb over. <laughs> Why don't you put it on your head right? It's a beret. Are you supposed to wear a beret like this? I'm not really quite sure why the kids' room is the main room of the house. You would think it would be the parents' room, but it looks like the mom and dad's bed is in the living room and the kid has this whole big area to himself. But what we've learned is that kids in Bulgaria during the 80s, they treasured their toys because they didn't have a big selection of toys. And also they were really into sports. So we learned that in Bulgaria and the Olympics, they brought home lots of gold medals in gymnastics. So a lot of the focus in school was to produce athletes. Now that we've finished up with the dining room, the lounge area and the kids room, we are heading towards the toilet. So one of Ali's techniques that he used to use to go to work, he wasn't allowed to have long hair at work, is he would try to use hair bands to try to cover his hair up. We just learned that boys in Bulgaria weren't allowed to have long hair either, so they would try similar techniques to what Ali used to use to make his hair look like it was shorter. This is the kitchen and looks pretty bog standard.
in the kitchen that we're in, the main appliances that they had were the washer, the refrigerator, and the stove. And we learned that these items were pretty rare to have because they had them in the showrooms, but as soon as they would get a new shipment in, they would sell out really fast. Um, another thing that we learned is that most Bulgarian families would store food in their pantry um, because food was also limited um, in terms of what you could find at certain times. So they would can a lot of things, make lots of jams, pickled items, and things like that. Also, I didn't notice this, but we just learned that there are candles and matches in every room in the house because there were electricity shortages. So Bulgaria at the time was exporting their electricity, and so they had an electricity outage schedule. So sometimes maybe you wouldn't have electricity for an hour or so throughout your day. All right, we've just completed our tour of the Red Flat. We learned so many things. We hope that you've enjoyed going along through each of the rooms and learning like we did. Um, it was cool getting a snapshot of how life was under communist time. This place is an interactive time capsule. Yeah, you, you have an audio guide that takes you around and gives you information about all of the artifacts. You can touch them, you can take them out, look at them. So it was really cool to be able to do that because in most places you just look at things but you don't actually get to interact with them. So this is really cool. Thank you for watching our vlog. We have videos coming out twice a week. Hit that subscribe button and make sure you get your one-way ticket with us. It's got pantyhose inside. Nice. Yours? No. I feel like me and Holly are two prospective renters looking at a new apartment to rent. We're just walking around, just inspecting everything. Holly's looking at the plumbing, seeing if the pipes work. I thought it said hip hop box, but it says hip flip top box. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know what it's called. It's ultra lights. So, this is what Marlboro lights used to be back in communist times. Class A cigarettes. Nothing but the best. Mm. It's literally no change to what you would normally wear. No. No. You choose this outfit, Ali. You had lots of other ones. It's kind of rich coming from <laughs> Cruella de Vil from <laughs> 1980s Bulgaria. <laughs>